so it's awesome time here in the UK and particularly in Cambridge and I'm here on Midsummer Common my kind of local patch about 20 minutes from where I live and again the circus has come back it's September and uh, the autumn trees provide a nice backdrop to the circus tent with the russets and the burnt siennas and the ochres and for some reason this uh, line of trees in the background is part of a place called Victoria Road what was it? <laughs> I think it's called like Victoria Road and I should know actually better since I've been here for 20 or 30 years anyway so for some reason this line of trees always turns uh, brown before any of the other trees you see uh, one or two they're all mainly horse chestnuts uh, but a lot of the trees are still quite green at the moment but, uh, for some reason these horse chestnuts always turn brown first and to me it's always been one of those times where well, another year's drawn to a close but never mind I'm out here sketching and, uh, I've just penciled in the uh, tent and the, the trees and the church in the background I'm about to do some watercolour um, I was hoping to show you another video another painting uh, this week but uh, it didn't <laughs> It didn't quite turn out as well as I hoped, but you know that's often the way. I spent eight, uh, I was out in the woods yesterday, uh, a few miles out of Cambridge, and I uh, spent you know, most of the afternoon painting. And uh, the one I was working on, which I really was looking forward to show, uh, woke up uh, this morning to all excited because uh, I thought I'd done a good job. I thought I'd done a good job at the time. But then you wake up in the cold light of the day and it smacks you in the face. <laughs> I know it's basically not enough contrast, but then, you know, that's the problem with painting plein air. Things might appear different at the time, but the next day it's uh, always not what you uh, thought it was. But anyway, let's get cracking on with this and uh, I'll do another update in, this, in a moment. Actually, before I uh, uh, put any paint on this, I wanted to naturally just cover uh, a particular important point when you're sketching outdoors and painting from life and all that kind of stuff. It's so important, you know, to edit out what it is you don't want in your picture. Now, that might seem a bit, you know, untruthful, a bit sort of, uh, some people call it lying or all that kind of stuff, you know, but. If we take a look at this scene here, and you've got all those camper vans, all those lorries, all those trucks. It's too much, and it's not helping the picture. At the end of the day, the picture exists in its own world, uh, in its own context. And it's for you as an artist to, you know, ideally, you know, depends what your persuasion is, to make it look beautiful, make it look uh, interesting, um, make it look balanced. And, you know, putting in every single van, every single, you know, truck or every single tree or every single blade of grass or whatever it is whatever the, uh, the scenario is it's a, uh, you really just got to edit out, you know, and edit out in the sense where you're, you know thinking about the general composition, the general shapes and these are the balance of things, so so the balance of, you know, the tent in this sort of middle distance with a few trucks uh, should hopefully be you know, a, a balance against the church steeple over there. Uh, I want the f uh, the focus to be on the tent, and that's where a lot of the detail will be. And so I want to uh, emphasise that shape and have a you know good strong sort of you know areas of contrast. And then I'll probably you know when it comes to uh, the paint or painting aspect of it, you know, sort of make the background a bit more subtle, uh, a bit more sort of. Uh, less range of tones that kind of stuff so so uh, just a little tip there and uh, just uh, give you an insight and kind of what thoughts going into the artist's mind uh, when they're confronted with a scene like this of course it's, it's sorry yeah 
so <laughs> someone's just come over to say hello so uh, I'll get back to you later so I'm getting somewhere with uh, this painting um, <laughs> so uh, there's so much I want to say but I can't essentially because uh, uh, some chap came and chatted and chatted and he chatted and he chatted and he chatted and now uh, he's there with his mate and their dogs <laughs> and they won't go away <laughs> uh, not to be more miserable but you know sometimes you just want to you know, concentrate on the job at hand anyway so uh, uh, I've used a bit of uh, gouache, white gouache with this uh, watercolour and it really helps with skies and things like that but also helps you know with the uh, opacity and the transparency of the colours as well so uh, I'm um, struggling a little bit with the trees I just need to find some balance in there but I've um, been heard the yeah, noise from the circus I'm not sure what's going on in there sounds like a motorbike and I say what I want to use is some uh, maybe some purples in with the oranges and the russets and the yellows and there's a little bit of green and the good thing about using gouache with watercolour you can go over in layers a bit more easily without uh, messing it all up anyway so uh, we'll see how it goes so this is finally finished and uh, it's actually been a lot warmer than I expected excuse the guys Bum in front of me. <laughs> it's always such low in it. You know, it's like you, you know, you're about ready to do your finishing uh, take, and there's always something else. Just a, you know, well, right. and anyway, I so a little bit tricky, but it's uh, uh, made all the easier by using a little bit of white gouache, just to you know, sort of correct a few things. And uh, yeah, we're call it a day. Got to have some tweet. Probably do another sketch. Actually, autumn's really a beautiful time here in Cambridge with the trees. So I'm going to uh, find a much quieter spot and uh, find a nice tree to draw. Okay, so catch you next time.